Well, hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at the Rapido B36-7. And this is a DCC and sound equipped locomotive with ESU Loke Sound inside. We're looking at the Conrail version. If I remember to do my editing right, you'll see the MSRP either in the description or on the screen right about now. But we're gonna get right into it. So let's take a look at what you get. unboxing for the first time lift that lid off take a look at what you get inside operating manual b36-7 diesel electric locomotive and uh, this is like a I don't know if it's a retro rapido trains logo or a new one but or something totally different that I'm not catching on to but uh, this is the manual usually a little funny jokes inside talks about uh, functions, CV programming, and uh, one thing that we've demonstrated before, the awesome slow speed thingy, which is uh, adjusting the back EMF, which allows for ultra smooth running, but I like to test things out of the box, so uh, if you ever want to know how this works, you could probably just pause your screen right there, as long as you're in full screen and 1080p HD, and you'll be able to see how to program the awesome slow speed thingy. We also have uh, the exploded parts diagram and then on the back each part. Uh, purpose of this is if something breaks, something's missing, you can look at the chart and look at the part number and call Rapido or email Rapido and say hey I need this part. Do you guys have it still? Okay there's a flyer for Facebook Instagram, their phone number, YouTube, I don't know what YouTube is, but maybe you do. Then there's some stickers inside, Rapido Trains Inc. Stick, sticker there, 100% Nerd sticker there. They also make t-shirts, by the way, that say 100% Nerd. And their famous boss is on this sticker here. But, that's all the niceties. Let's get to the locomotive, which is probably what you're interested in. Extra MU hoses. Uh, it looks like a wind deflector or mirror in there and a coupler. <clears throat> I believe these are KD couplers so it's equipped with those. I don't know where my turntable is after getting this bench work complete down here so it's disappeared but you have truck immobilizers as I call them. You want to make sure those are out before you set the locomotive down. If they're not out you got a good chance your locomotive is going to tip over so sometimes they blend in with the color of the truck, just like in this case, the immobilizer is black and so is the truck, so you want to be careful with that or your locomotive will be on the ground faster than a CSX train wreck. So, got some handrail protection in here we'll get out off screen because I'll fidget with it for 20 minutes we'll take a closer look. All right, I have even more light on this than usual. There's lots of great features. We'll start on the nose here. Separately applied grabs, kind of standard at this point. Separately applied windshield wipers that look like they're thin printed metal. Robust plastic handrails, stanchions, and a safety chain up front. You got the anti-climber. Right below that is the fog lights. Uh, fog lights, I'm sorry, ditch lights. We're thinking cars here, not trains, that are um, LED powered. Um, MU hoses and receptacles below that. There's also the metal coupler I mentioned, KD metal coupler, and the airline hose, all with silver tipped ends. The uh, snow plow here has the appropriate and accurate windows on the snow plow, so that's correct. And little grab irons on the snow plow as well, if you can see those. That's a nicely detailed and correct snow plow from what I can find. You have the windows in the front, cab windows in the front. Like I said, all four have windshield wipers. Crew access stairs to the door here. Even finely detailed door latches that are molded in on the door. On the top, you'll see a single Sinclair antenna right here. A very detailed cab interior that is just a shame. It's a real shame that I can't show you better because Rapido details their cab interiors like 
so accurately. It's crazy. Uh, I saw a rendition when this was announced. It was like a pre-production sample photo, and you could see every little thing about the cab. It was all the little details of the cab. Sometimes they go as far as even put a fire extinguisher inside. I don't know if uh, they're in this one here, but um, you can just, you know, I'm just going to be uh, really easy with the with the graphics, but that's your cab. Instead of trying to impose the graphics in here, I'll show you the cab this way. So that's the cab of the locomotive, uh, kind of under a time cr crunch for editing, so wouldn't be able to edit that in. It's just an easier version. But this is a 3D scanned uh, B36-7, and I think they did it from a CSX model. <clears throat> and it just makes it so accurate because they 3D scan it and it's all all the dimensions are there and you're good to go. So you don't have to worry about bulky dimensions that you get with some manufacturers. Another thing that they're crazy about is the underbody detail. You can see on this one, there's the sanding lines, the speed recorder, uh, there's the jacking pad there, but there's also just so much detail. So jacking pad, there's conduit, electrical conduit right here. And then you got the speed recorder and the sanding lines uh, on here as well. So the truck detail is just insane. And then emergency shutoff on the fuel tank, sight glass on the fuel tank, and all the compartment detail along the side too. Uh, battery box doors up under the cab here. Just a uh, really nice detail. Rapido is usually at the top of what I consider... Uh, most of the manufacturers for detail they're at the top end for detail for sure exhaust uh, is pretty prominent on these it's a spotting feature that they're kind of prominent like that they're not really low lying they stick out that far uh, you've got the radiator fan grills on the back and the stanchions you can see are straight even though they're plastic there's a lot of problems in the industry with wavy handrails but these are straight even as plastic. The paint's nicely applied from what I can see, but you guys are actually seeing a much more enhanced version of this model than I am because you can blow it up on a screen and I'm just looking at the model and viewfinder with my terrible eyesight. Well, all the white uh, for safety for crew access is applied to the end of the, the stairs. You have see-through steps on the stairs. Uh, you could probably get a glimpse of that. So those are etch see-through stairs and as we work our way to the back you've got the Conrail quality uh, nice and prominent back here the number boards are back here uh, there's lit the number boards are lit you've got the uh, class lights separately applied uh, grab irons or ladders in this case uh, drop step over the coupler and then all that detail we we're talking about I don't think I mentioned the coupler cut levers but that exists too an MU receptacle can be seen on this end as I turn this towards the light more you can see the MU receptacles that little red circle there so lots and lots of details and those class lights it depends on which road name you get they are doing road name specific details I'm sure they do road number specific details I just haven't researched if that's um, you know, a thing so on this, or if it's needed, but I'm if it is, I know Rapido is doing it. You can get it uh, DC as well, it doesn't have to be DCC in sound, by the way. So, there's just uh, a lot of a lot of detail. So, we talked about that here. Let's go to this side, it's a little different without the uh, turntable, but that's the radiator fan grill section again. Uh, under the hood, if you want to call it that, there's a five-pole skew-wound motor. Uh, Rapido's drives have just always been so nice. Uh, usually never have problems with speed steps, but I will show you that and make sure uh, that's the case. You can see the truck detail again on this side, but one thing about this side on the front that we didn't go over is the truck chain detail. That's a real chain. It hangs. It doesn't impede any operation it doesn't impede removing the shell uh, I don't believe it doesn't look like it is it's connected to that so it's a nice realistic added effect 
You can see peeking through the stanchion here <clears throat> the emergency handbrake. So all of that detail is just uh, you know come what we come to expect from Rapido, but you know you guys can take a look and pick it apart if you want. But I'm just one of these happy model railroaders that unless I see something glaring, I'm probably not gonna be upset. So on the front you see the pronounced headlight and number boards. Sinclair antenna I mentioned. There's also a smaller antenna back here. And we talked about the horn is mounted right back here as well. Okay, we're ready to start this thing up. Uh, start up, mute, and shut down, all controlled by F8 on the ESU Loke Sound decoder, which is installed here out of the factory. All right, so you got the startup sequence there. We're gonna go with the F0 for the headlight. I'll show you the lighting later, but that's where F0 is, so I'll just make sure it's functioning. F1 is bell. Horn. F3 is flange squeal, so you have to kind of get moving, you get it moving to here. Might need a, it's the brake sound there, it may need uh, curves really to get the flange squeal going, but, oh there we go. All right, F4 is dynamic brake. Again, moving to hear that. Turn flame squirrel off here. F5's Doppler horn. So, when I was brand new in the hobby, I didn't understand what Doppler was. I mean, Doppler horn was, I know it sounds stupid, but... I don't. For some modelers, it sounds stupid. So I'm going to explain it real quick. It's just a, if you're at a fixed point and the locomotive is whirling past you, you get that Doppler effect as it's passing you at high speeds, and that's what that sound is mimicking. F6 ditch lights. We'll look at lighting later, like I mentioned. Seven headlights, dimming the headlights. F9, we already mentioned F8, so F9 is full throttle, um, which is an uh, ESU feature, which allows for, you know, notching up the RPMs before you actually get moving to kind of simulate taking all the slack out of the line on a long train. F10 is brake, F11 is class lights, 12 is switching mode, 16 is ditch lights uh, flashing, 17 is styro light if we have it, which we don't, strato light I mean, 19 is number board, and 20 is spitter valve. So those are the functions of the locomotive. I do want to cover full throttle in a little more detail. So ESU's full throttle feature allows you to play the prime mover of your B36-7 like a musical instrument. 
when you press F9, you turn on drive hold. Okay, so we're gonna hit that. This keeps the speed of the engine consistent at whatever speed your throttle happens to be on. Then, as you increase the throttle, you'll hear the prime mover revving up. This sounds awesome, whether you're taking off from a computer station stop at warp speed or trying to get that long, slow freight up, uh, over the grade. So, as you can see, I'm increasing my throttle, but we're not moving. That's because I have F9 engaged. And when you throttle it down, it simulates coasting, and yes, I am reading directly from the ESU manual. So you see how it's moving now, and it continues to move at that speed, and then when I let it go, it'll resume. So, pretty cool feature. ESU full throttle, you really should check more into it. So now we've covered that, we'll take a look at some lighting features with a little darker in here. Okay, now let's talk about lighting. First of all, the number board lighting. This is the most accurate, both in color temperature and execution I've seen in the hobby. It's very nicely done. There's no shine through, but it looks realistic. Beautiful number boards. Headlight, F0. F7 will dim the headlight. And then you have F6, which is the ditch lights. Or which are, are the ditch lights, as you can see here, very bright. LEDs, good color temperature, reflects nicely on the track in front of it. And if you hit the horn, you get oscillation of ditch lights. Again, well executed out of the box without having to change CVs. That oscillation rate, that color temperature, that brightness, it's all executed really well. Lighting's very well done by Rapido. Now let's look at the butt of this thing. Okay, on the back you see another set of number boards, classification lights activated by F11. In this case, on and off red, I believe is the only color, but that is the classification lights on the rear. And then you have the rear light. Okay, we're going to check coupler height. You may be asking why I'm using different track. The track I did use was not allowing for the KD gauge to sit fully. So, looks a tad bit high on that side, but you be the judge. And the back end appears to be dead on, but again, you, you be the judge. I'm looking through a Viewfinder, you've get the, you've got this blown up on your screen. So that is the NMRA compliance for coupler height. I already did wheel sets off camera, and those are fine. All in compliance there, they usually are with the models I test. Pull test is going to be hard to see. You're just going to have to take my word for it. You can also listen to how quiet the motor is. Looks like we are at... Three ounces, 3.1 and climbing, about 3.1 ounces. So you're looking at almost uh, 50 cars, 50 HO cars this can pull. Um, that's just kind of arbitrary. I don't know. You could possibly pull more. Uh, this new track I'm using is just kind of a test track. So it could be a little slipper, slippery than the other um, brands that I've been using in the past, but I've done a few pull tests on it now without any issue. Weight on my dusty scale here, just over a pound at one pound, 0 0.3, 0 0.3 ounces, yep, 16.3 ounces, 462 grams. One thing I didn't show you was slow speed control. There's one speed step. Barely moving along. Two speed steps. Just really slow. Three. Four. 
And five. And the back speed, there's one. I'm going to leave it at one because I'm going to put the AccuTrack speedometer here to test this out. Just line it up here with the front. I bet you it's not going to register, it's just crawling too slowly. There is a low hum to the motor when it's crawling, and there you have it. It aired out, it's going too slow. So, one speed step, I mean, if we do five, or let's go to seven. If we do seven speed steps, move this up so it doesn't take so long. I'd be surprised if you get maybe two scale miles an hour and one and some change. So there's seven speed steps out of 126, 128, two, two and some change. So we're looking at about three speed steps is maybe one mile per hour. So at this speed, everything's way smoothed out. It's even smooth at really low speeds. It's just going incredibly slow. And it shows you how precise, smooth that Rapido drive is. All right, well, that's going to wrap up our review of the Rapido B36-7. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I was thorough enough for you. Right now, there's no sound uh, activated on the locomotive, and it's moving along at seven speed steps. You can't hear a thing. The motor is just that quiet, as you can see there. But I figured I'd let it go by as I kind of wrapped up the review of this. Great engine, great execution, especially on the lights. Detail's fine. You know, some people want to really pick things apart. I'm not that guy. This hobby is a hobby for a reason. Um, but what I can see from just glancing at pictures and looking at things, this is an accurate model. I provide the 1080p HD, and I, I provide the up-close looks at things so that if you want to pick things out, I have no... Uh, I take no offense for people that do want to pick things out that they're able to make an informed decision by looking at such and seeing that, you know, something is out of place and they absolutely is a deal breaker to them or whatever. Or if they want to order a detailed part, you know, to have that delivered along with their model, they can. So, with that said, well-executed model. You can find them in your hobby shops, uh, local retailers, and online. We'll see you next time right here on my channel, The Benchwork is done so if you didn't see my last video this is the layout and it's going to be pretty epic with uh, over 150 feet of main line uh, just in phase one so it's going to be pretty epic but we're going to be starting to build the bench work soon and that's why some of these reviews are being delayed slightly so thanks for watching guys and we'll see you soon take care